And now to introduce myself, I am Christine Pomerantz. I'm the chairperson of the Department of International Trade and Marketing for the Fashion Industries. And we're very happy to welcome uh, the FMM classes that are here, as well as the ITM classes, as well as Miles' guests and Tanya's guests and all of you uh, who are here today. And also, we do have an audience online. So uh, when you ask your questions, make sure that you speak into the mics. We will be streaming in one of our speakers from Ghana. We have Roberta Anand uh, over there. And uh, so she'll be speaking to us uh, from Ghana. So in the meantime, why did we, uh, why are we holding this session? This is actually the third session that we have on Africa. The first one was actually in February when uh, Janice and I, Janice, by the way, is one of our collaborators, yeah. Uh, when we organized the Creating Sustainable Futures, Empowering Women Through the International Fashion Industry, where we had invited companies like Indigo Africa to talk about collaborations of designers with the artisans in Africa. Uh, what is exciting about tonight is you will actually see creations from Africa itself. So it's, it's, it's delightful to have that turnaround. Uh, also this summer, uh, Adiat, who is one of our speakers here, uh, and I had organized a guest lecture with 10 African designers and two beauty specialists. And that was also a very successful event. So we hope that you will uh, help to build the excitement tonight. Uh, we look forward to uh, what our speakers have to offer later this evening. And so just to give you an intro, um, Africa is one of the greatest recipients of direct foreign investment, uh, certainly from China, Japan, and India, and other parts of the world. It actually has a middle class of something like 310 million, which is equivalent to the population of the United States. And the Economist Intelligence Unit estimates that by the year 2030, the spending of the top 18 countries in Africa will be something like $1.3 trillion. So you already have brands like Mango, Gap, Tara, and Levi's in there. Uh, and you're going to see a lot more. But at the same time, Africa is producing its own designs. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce to you uh, Tanya Cole, our moderator. Tanya has over 20 years of experience in the industry. Uh, she uh, also worked with the African Development Bank. And uh, she is uh, currently promoting business between the United States and the region. So Tanya, here you are. Thank you very much, Christine. Um, I'd like to thank all of you for coming out for this wonderful, wonderful evening that we're going to share together. This is really going to be an opportunity for us to hear about some really interesting things that are happening, not only in terms of fashion, but also in terms of development. And that's what I'm really excited about. So thank you for coming out. Um, one of the things I wanted to do is just sort of like set, set the stage for this in terms of the platform. Because, you know, people have been talking about Africa. I was working at the African Development Bank. I just came here last February, and I've been working with Miles, and I am really big on Africa. I've always been big on Africa. And what was interesting at the African Development Bank is, as I mentioned with Lexi, I had, where else could you go where you had the opportunity to have access to 54 different countries? Hmm. And that's really important because when people talk about Africa, they kind of think of it sometimes here in the U.S. as one entity. And really, culturally, and many of you know that already, Africa is certainly something very different. And what I love about that is the diversity. Because with diversity comes opportunity. And with opportunity comes an opportunity to have development. And one of the things I thought was interesting is when I spoke with uh, Janice, who's one of the collaborators here, when she first asked me about this, being a moderator, I said, well, fashion? I mean, I work in diplomacy. I work in development. I have, like, an engineering background. How do we merge those two together? 
And then I started like peeling through, you know, like you take an onion and you pull back the onion. And I really saw the connections and I'm really happy to be here because where you have fashion, you have to deal with sourcing. And where you have sourcing and manufacturing the supply chain, you have to have energy. And once you talk about energy, that is really important in Africa because that means that we start competing for energy, we compete for water, we compete for resources. And that's something that I hope Lexi will talk about as well because one of the big issues um, that's taking place right now in Africa is how do we manage climate change? And that's something that certainly will touch upon the fashion industry. So I'm very, very happy to be here um, today to talk about Fashion, trade, that's pretty much my background, market opportunities. Africa is the buzzword. So one of the things I wanted to do is put it into context. Why now? I mean, many of us have been talking about Africa for a long time, and I know that's true with you, Lexi. I know that's true with you, Adia, as well as with you, Janice. So why has this become so important? I mean, everyone's talking about it. I was in Paris about three weeks ago, and I know the International Herald Tribune, they're going to do a whole thing about luxury, fashion, Africa, Roma. They're putting on seminars. Well, let me give you a few salient facts, and I think this is something that Christine actually touched upon. Africa, 54 countries characterized by diversity, meaning there is opportunity for all. Five to seven percent growth, average growth. The U.S., we experienced 1.3 percent growth for this year, and most likely that will be edged down for next year. So we're talking about an average to five to seven percent growth. And in certain places like Nigeria, Nigeria actually has been given the emerging market status which means that they're moving fairly quickly in terms of opportunities. And then we have other countries like Ghana, Ghana with the oil and gas. What does that mean? That means buying power. That means a whole middle class is coming up. But more importantly, I want to tie it into you because you are the young people. You are the next generation. And that's really important. In Africa, we have somewhere in the area of 40 to almost 50 percent in certain countries where the age, the youth age, is under 25 years old. So what does that mean? That means we need jobs, we need opportunity, and that's opportunity for all of us in terms of transatlantic relationships. So with that, I would like to bring our first, bring, I'd like to introduce our first speaker. Um, I'm really excited about this because I actually had an opportunity to look at some of the videos for some of the things that Lexi's doing. Okay, so our first speaker will be Lexi Moho Ayas. Now, Lexi is president and CEO of Legendary Gold Limited, and he will discuss the emergence of the Nigeria fashion industry, industry as a major player on the global stage. Lexi has been considered and is the vanguard and catalyst in the Nigerian fashion industry. He is known for introducing the first major fashion event in Nigeria, and I believe that was in 1997. I may have that wrong. I'm not dating you, so don't date me. <laughs> okay. So, and he's continuing to do that. And in fact, the next Nigeria Fashion Week will be held this November. And what was really interesting, I saw one of his videos, and I hope that he'll talk about that and touch upon it, because the second day of the Nigeria Fashion Week, there will be an opportunity for the Growing Green Initiative. So here you have someone who's bringing in fashion, who's bringing in climate change issues, and who's also touching upon development. So I think that will be very, very interesting to see that. One of the things I wanted to highlight about Lexi is that he's actually signed a major franchise contract in Paris with Fashion TV. Many of you probably know of that, which led to the birth of opportunities for young Nigerian girls to build a career in, international model, in the international modeling industry. He has worked on reorientating Nigerian designers to look Inward, inwardly for fabrics, accessories, and designs in the production line. Lexi, what I like about him is, is he's raising awareness, not just in Africa, but across Europe and also in the U.S., and certainly through the Nigerian fashion industry. Please welcome Lexi Moho Ayas. Thank you. Thank you. 
a very pleasant good evening, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Um, I would say this is a honor to be here to talk about some few things we have done. Um, the area I want to take it from, I want to talk about um, some few ways we've been able to empower women in Nigeria, most especially, in extension, women in Africa. Yes, for us, fashion is very key. Fashion is the business we know and we've done for so many years. But one thing we saw as very important, taking into consideration where we come from, which is Africa, is to, able to, is to be able to touch the lives of women. For your information, in, in Africa, the bedrock of families all over the place is women. Women make a lot of difference, you know, for both the generation that has passed and the generation to come. In Africa, women are the ones that take care of just everything. They take care of their husbands, they take care of the kids, you know, they toil day and night to make sure there's food in the table, you know. So for that reason, we decided that we, you know, must use fashion to touch the lives of women, especially those women who are um, creative in the fashion industry, you know. So our first event in 97 is the Nigeria Fashion Show. The Nigeria, with the Nigeria Fashion Show, we try to reorient Nigerian designers to look inward, to look at fabrics, accessories, and designs. And this, this was like um, about 15, 16 years ago, because we felt that for Nigerian or African designers to compete globally, they must be able to present collection that, that, that you know, is alien to Europe, America, and to Asia. You know, so for that, for that reason, we try to reorient the Nigerian designers to look in what to look at fabrics, accessories, and designs. You know, so the Nigeria Fashion Week actually, <laughs> okay, thanks. The Nigeria Fashion Week, you know, is um, an offshoot of the Nigeria Fashion Show. The Nigeria Fashion Week actually started like six years, you know, after the, the, the Nigeria Fashion Show. You know, and um, like I said, when we're starting the Nigeria Fashion Week, our idea was to introduce some, some um, um, part of it that will empower women, because for us, we know it is very, very important to empower women, you know. So what did we do? we try to introduce this idea of a competitive um, atmosphere for, for participants. That means we introduce something like, I mean, we, we called it, you know, competing for empowerment. Okay, we called it competing for empowerment. The idea of this actually, you know, is to try to discover disadvantageous rural women who are creative, you know, in the, in the fashion industry. You know, and we, the, the idea also is in the process improve, you know, like their skills and their training for this. And I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not seeing this very, very well, but I will just, um, you know, is actually to, like, like I said, okay, after training them, we all also, you know, wanted to market, market their, their products, you know, and for, for, for this purpose, I am using three examples of women that have gone through this process, women that have really, you know, benefited from, from, the, from this process. Okay, the first one I want to talk about. Okay, the very first person I want to talk about is a fashion designer known as Agebin Creation. 
competing for, for, for empowerment for her, I mean, we've done this for like three communities in Nigeria. Nigeria is divided into six geopolitical zones. You know, we did it in three geopolitical zones. And one of them, we were able to discover um, um, this lady, you know, her trademark or her trade name is a, a given creation. You know, we discovered her, it's, it's, um, the, 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 the competition we did is, it, the, is called Bayasa State. You know, it's a rich oil state in Nigeria. And it was sponsored in three consecutive years by the first lady of, of the state. You know, so when we got into the state, we advertised generally for designers and accessory makers. And I mean, we, we have a whole lot of women, you know, that we, we saw. And she was about six of so many, you know, that we, that we picked, you know, and we suggested to the state government, after training them in the first place, we created an avenue for them to, to go for further training, you know, and that was done in Thailand. They were sponsored by the, by the state um, um, government. They went to Thailand for further training. And when they came back, her first prize was to, to show a collection during the Nigeria Fashion Week, you know, which she did, and that really turned, you know, her business around. We got support from the state government, you know, who sort of, um, sort of created like a seed money for her to get her business started. But the moment she showed at the Nigeria Fashion Week, you know, everything really, really turned around. She started getting orders, you know, from all over the country, you know, and um, within a short time, she opened a very, very huge outlet. You know, in Nigeria, you have like um, three very big cities. You have Lagos, we have Abuja, we have Port Harcourt. You know, she opened a very big shop in Port Harcourt, you know, and she just did not stop there. You know, one of the other things, you know, we've just been able to do with her is the, the one thing is to have one person that is successful. But the most important thing for us is not just to have one person that is successful, but to be able to duplicate that process, you know, so that if you empower one person, yes, you've empowered one. But through one person, we can empower a lot of people and it will make a lot of difference because it will touch a whole lot of families. So for her, what we came up with was for her to start training young girls who are also interested, you know, in the fashion industry, you know, and um, till date as I speak, we've, we've, we've just been able to do that with a lot of young girls, you know, that have learned the trade, that have been also been empowered by setting funds from the state government in, in Bayelsa State. Okay, the next person I actually want to talk about is um, Oluchi James. We also came across her from the eastern part of Nigeria, you know, and um, we, we, the first time we, we met with her, we saw she was, she didn't have like, you know, a, 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 a training in jewelry making, you know, so and we, when we saw what she, she, what she was doing then, we saw that this was very creative, you know, and it came naturally. She didn't have like any training. So what we did was to get her out, get um, pay for her to really have, to, to go for training, you know, in jewelry making. And after that, we gave her the platform of the Nigeria Fashion Week. All the designers that saw her jewelries wanted to collaborate with her, wanted to do things with her, you know, wanted her to get jewelries, special jewelries for, you know, their clothes. And that she did. So within a short time, she had all a lot of networks from our, uh, various designers from our, around the country, you know, and her business really, really blossomed. Then the most important thing about her also, like I said earlier, is not just to empower one person, but to also use those people we empower to empower other people, you know, and that we did with her. Today, she's trained a whole lot of people in jewelry making, not just training them, but also to empower them so that they themselves, you know, can take care of themselves, their families, you know, and also, you know, em empower other people. For her, most especially for her, one, one program we came up with with her, you know, is to look for a way. In Nigeria, generally, a lot of women, some of the times, find it difficult to go through school. You know, I know generally in Europe and America, it is easy. There are a lot of things put in place. People can manage. The government can support you know, young people to go to school and all that. But back in Africa, in Nigeria most especially, you know, everybody's like on their own. You know, it's either your family is able to, 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 to see you through school, you know, or you don't go to school. So one thing we've been able to do with Oluchi is 
we've just been able to put certain things in place to go to discover those girls that are interested in jewelry making that not you know that for some reasons have not been able to take up themselves through school you know so with what we have done with her you know we've been able to empower these young girls and this process has, you know most of the times you know have made them go through school pay their fees themselves the last person i want to talk about really is um she does bag and shoes and she's from the northern part of nigeria the northern part of nigeria is um I mean, they are very more conservative because they are Muslims, you know, so you don't find a lot of designers, you don't find a lot of people like that coming from the north. There are very few. You know, we met her the first time, you know, we're having this event with the Alliance Francaise, the French Cultural Center in the northern part of Nigeria. You know, we met her then with a lot of these things, and two years later, we met her again. And when we saw the, you know, her, her, her products, she uses local, locally sourced materials to you know, to produce her shoes and her bags and the rest of them, you know. So when we met her, we invited her to the Nigeria Fashion Week after so many years of seeing what she, she has to, you know, what she has. And after the Nigeria Fashion Week she exhibited, I mean, it was something else. You know, she got more orders, you know. Things actually changed for her positively, you know. And at the end of the day, with her, we also decided to set up a small factory in the northern part of Nigeria where young girls can also learn, you know, and empower themselves as well. Can you help me with this? Okay, let's go through this. I'm sorry about this. I'm not. I'm, I, I couldn't really read from this because they are too. They are very, very tiny. So I mean, you need to help myself from from here if you don't mind. Okay. What have we really benefited from? You know, the committee. The committees we've been able to have this when we talk about competitive empowerment. You know, we've discovered and brought to limelight creative women in the fashion industry, who would have remained undiscovered? OK, thanks. Thanks. You know, that we did. We improved the skills of these women by way of training them. We also economically empowered these women through sales, because we gave them the platform of the Nigeria Fashion Week able to do that. In addition, we just did not remain with these women. We also transferred knowledge from them to other women, you know, who you know are doing the same thing. In this process, we created wealth, you know, and all those processes also created jobs. Next slide. Okay. Some of the challenges we face actually in doing this, because most of the times, you know, we have done it as a company as part of our social responsibility and as part of, you know, just for us to go to empower women, you know. So the major problem we face in all this is really funding to be able to do this perfectly, you know, and our future goals. Yes, we've done it in three communities or th three geopolitical zones in Nigeria, but we want to be able to extend, you know, we want to be able to extend to other parts of Nigeria. Okay, talking about Nigeria Fashion Week. Nigeria Fashion Week is actually coming up between the, between the 8th and the 10th of November in Lagos. We've been able to address two social issues with the Nigeria Fashion Week. The first one is for us able to empower women, you know, through it. And in the last two years, one thing we've been able to, we, we wanted to do is to draw awareness to climate change in Nigeria. You know, yes, in Europe, in America, in Asia, a lot of people know what climate change is, what it's all about. But in Africa, we're just beginning to, we're just beginning to get there. You know, so, so one of the things we want to do, we've been trying to do since last year, is through the Nigeria Fashion Week, draw awareness to climate change. Nigeria Fashion Week, we have like six shows, two shows every day for three days. One of those six shows, you know, is 
particularly set up aside, you know, for, you know, we call it the Going Green Collection. You know, the Going Green Collection features designers, you know, that present collection that is made from recycled materials. You know, so last year we had a huge turnout. The awareness was so much, it was um, covered in most of the international news media. And what we want to do this year is, yes, we want to go to show this Going Green Collection. But in addition, we want to do something like tree planting exercise and awareness work. And that is already generating a, you know, a lot of interest. For us, we believe the fashion industry is a very good avenue, you know, to go to reach out to people. Why? The fashion industry is very important because we all wear clothes. You know, after food, the next most important thing to man is clothing. I mean, I think clothes even come before, before housing. Even if you, you live on the street, you still wear clothes, you still cover your body. You know, so for us, we want to be able to seize the opportunity of using the fashion industry, you know, to, to bring awareness, you know, and to touch a lot of lives. You know, so those two things, you know, are some of the things we want to, we want to, um, we want to, we want to do and we've just been able to contribute. Thanks so much for being a wonderful audience. <laughs> Thank you very much, Lexi. Um, I'm sure our audience enjoyed that. I think what was really interesting is Lexi touched upon awareness, social responsibility. One of the things that we'll hear a little bit later is corporate social responsibility. But what I really thought was very interesting is, is that he really talked a lot about giving back and not just giving back to individuals, but how that affects the community and empowerment within the community. And I think that that's something interesting that I think some of our other speakers will also touch upon. But what's unique, and that's something that I found, giving back is not something new in Africa. That's sort of the new luxury right now. We hear a lot about that. But that's something that has been going on for generations. And I think that's something that comes out of the community. And there are many people, even here in this university, in Fashion Institute of Technology, that are studying here who have family in Africa. And in many cases, something that I ran across, many of the students are people who are working here. They send somewhere in the neighborhood up to like 80% sometimes of their income back to their country to invest in their community or to invest in their family. And as you said, Lexi, I think you hit upon it, to empower women. When you empower women, you empower families. And when you empower families, you empower communities. And with that, I'd like to lead up to our next speaker. Our next speaker is Adia Desu. I think she's wonderful. I mean, she's the founder and executive director of Africa Fashion Week. And I sat down with her right before this session, and I said, wow, you're the director of this, you're the founder. She goes, no, 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 I'm just really cool, I'm really laid back. But I think, I mean, I think it's pretty amazing um, what she's done. So basically, Adia, is the founder of and director of Africa Fashion Week, and she will highlight how Adiere Public Relations, a luxury goods communication firm, is connecting African designers with the international market and retailers. Because you can actually have designers, and like in Lexi's case, you can actually try to empower people and come up with fashion design. You can source in terms of the supply chain, but unless you have someone who can promote it and get it out there and connect, then it's all for naught. And so you really do have to have that component there as well. So Adia's group is promoting their skills and craft and the role that Africa Fashion Week, which was founded by Desu, has played in redefining African fashion and luxury to global consumers. Adia's international brand development firm also manage, manages established platforms in London, Paris, Milan, Berlin, and Tokyo. So Adia is everywhere. She's definitely international. Um, Adia focuses on fashion, art, home decor, and beauty with the motto, luxury brands focus globally. 
Audio has taken brands that are exclusive and placed them on nationally esteemed and recognizable stages via placement in Elle, Washington Post, and Huffington Post, and others. And this is something I think is truly remarkable because in less than, less than a year, Audio secured a proclamation from Mayor Bloomberg declaring the week of July through the, the 12th through the 18th as the official date for Africa Fashion Week in the state of New York. And that's pretty impressive. Um, so with, without due delay, I'd like to, rec I'd like to uh, welcome Adia Desu up to the podium, please. Thank you. Hi, good evening, everyone. All right, so my name is Adia Disu. Feel free to ask any questions. I'll make this brief because at the end of the day, my presentation really looks to just establish a foundation in your brilliant minds and establish what you can do in contributing the, to the whole rebranding of Africa. It's not so untouchable as it may seem or complex. And uh, I was able to do it being based here in New York um, so I look forward to hopefully fostering the great entrepreneurs in here that will establish business and help businesses establish in Africa as well. So my presentation is at the end of the day going to talk about how we've been able to help designers to access the top fashion markets, one of them being in New York. And for all of those who are tweeting and doing all their social media stuff, I just gave you an extra slide, pound African fashion, you know, because I know that's what you're doing at the same time I'm paying attention. <laughs> all right, so I wanted to make something clear. I know that many are bombarded with this image of what Africa is, and sometimes that can be a deterrent to either figuring out how I can contribute to establishing brands in Africa or changing or making a difference in Africa altogether, whether it be through fashion, entertainment, whatever it is that you have your mind set on. But I wanted to give you an idea that Africa, we are wealthy overall. And what we're wealthy in is the number of consumers. I mean, it's according to the UN, uh, Africa is um, home to 900 million potential consumers. So again, I think Lexi has made it clear that there's opportunity when you look at the number of people that are there ready to consume. And um, it is also expected that in, two in 220 that we'll have about 1.4 trillion consumer purchases. So for all of those who are financially driven and motivated, that's big dollars and money. So how can you contribute to that and how can you help brands that are there access that? Well, the first thing that Adi Ray has been able to do is really at the end of the day motivate designers. When we have designers reach out to us and say, why should we do Africa Fashion Week in New York or what should we expect when, having, when wanting to present in other markets other than Africa, I usually tell them that first off, don't try to strip away too much of what makes you unique and those things that you embed in your designs, which is your culture. I think that you should utilize your culture and the resources that are immediate around you to showcase all your designs, necklaces, jewelry, bags, and things of that nature. But then as an, a brilliant um, business person, you have to also be con uh, consumed by the thought that there are consumers who must purchase your designs. So learning to, to adapt all of your business ideas to the various tastes of your consumers, that's essential. So we always prep designers and we take a look at some of the things that they look to showcase on the runway to see whether or not these things are, I guess, marketable and able to eventually be sold in the, 
in the market that they're showcasing, i.e. New York. So some of the designs here, you know, we've worked with so many designers. We have the um, South African designer called Megan Isaacs, whose penny necklace that we use, and I mean, she just uses brass and pennies to design her neckties and things of that nature, which is brilliant. Then you have Katomomalu, who uses her fabrics from Liberia and also incorporates fra uh, traditional fabrics. Um, so you'll, we have, we motivate a lot of designers not to just rely on the fabrics that, um, that come from their country, but also, again, mixing and matching with the taste of consumers in which they're targeting. Then we go through this process with designers. We get, we get down to the real. We ask them to identify the skill sets that you have. What is it that you have currently and where is it that you need to go? And where does Adi Ray play in that? Many of them have the skill of design and some have the skill of the you know, PR and social media. And as the PR company who really specializes in the PR and social media and really getting that publicity going, we really try to help many of the designers with that. Because what we realize is that many of the designers who want to show, they have amazing collections. But when you go to Google them, which many of you guys do, you know, Google, you just go straight there when you need an answer. You can't find them. So it's that oh my gosh, this designer is awesome, but where am I going to find them? And who's going to find out about them? So then where Adi Ray comes in with the traditional marketing, which is the event planning, but then with the whole social media, the pin interest, the Instagram, the Facebook, all of those things help as we repeatedly place their information out online through various platforms. For example, our Africa Fashion Week New York um, Facebook within three years, we've been able to be, we're at about 30,000 followers, I believe. So that platform alone allows us to really, you know, just push the information out there to all the fans. And it's amazing to see fans, as soon as you put an image of one of the designers' designs up, how many fans are actually saying, where can I buy this? Where can I get this? I need this ASAP, inbox me. And so this, these designers are able to use that, especially if they don't have a website or any online presence at all. They're able to use that to gauge, okay, this is, my designs are actually amazing. And there are people interested in it, whether it's in New York or Paris or LA. And that allows them to say, okay, the next steps now are really creating a platform so that we can actually sell. So we have a collection of, let's say, a, a database fan of, a fan of database, a database of fans that really can allow the designers to gauge whether or not their designs are successful or will be successful. Again, going back to what we tell designers, um, look inward in terms of your resources, what you want to use, with, use, utilize within your designs. Uh, the resources, I know that, for example, some designers have access to a lot of beautiful raw materials or meta metals. Um, so we always say, don't be so quick to just utilize resources that are outside of your country and abandon whatever it is that you have, thinking that it isn't going to be of use or interest to others because that's what makes you unique at the end of the day. Identify programs. It is not cheap showcasing and marketing and PR. Like, it's expensive. So many, many times we at Adi Ray, we create partnerships with programs from the USAID where designers who need that additional help or boost to come and showcase on our platforms or who need that additional marketing and PR support, the funding for that, we connect them with programs and whom we have connections with. And that helps because many of the designers don't know where to start and it can be overwhelming. Think about taking your collection to somewhere unknown, having to worry about um, executing the collection, having to worry about whether or not you can make it to 42nd and 8th and then Madison without getting lost. It, it's, it can be a lot. So we really try to help our designers as much as we can by looking inside of our database of partners and sponsors to see who can be interested in these designers and help them get, get here to, to showcase.
Whoa. Um, so this is where we really try to appeal to our designers because in that, when we are looking for sponsors and partners, not only to work with our event, but also to directly work with the designers, we really start getting nitty gritty and start getting very detailed uh, with the designers. We ask them about the taste. Have you considered the taste of not only your consumers, but those products and um, sponsors that you want to work with. I always like to use the example of um, like Iman Cosmetics. In the past year or so, they worked with Sony to uh, showcase, uh, to do a Mercedes-Benz Fashion Week show. And I always tell designers that not only should you rely on Adi Ray to do all these things, but you should also make sure that your brand as well is ready-made so that other pro other brands will be ready to support you in showing with us and in working with us because that's also an option so already have in mind you know if if you have great designs that are very i don't know apple like maybe contacting and there you can do that contacting apple and saying hey we want you to sponsor our initiative and get us out here to new york to show and these are things that we always try to embed and help um, embed in our consulting and help with our designers. Innovation, going back to the website, you know, innovation, when we say innovation here in New York, we might not immediately think of website because that's just something that's automatic. But again, some of these designers don't have websites. And even when they approach websites, many of the times when we go to their websites, they're really not as user friendly or up to date. And that could be various reasons. And, but what we try to do is, again, we have programmers and developers that we work with. We try to work within the budget of these designers, but also we just try to make them aware. If this is not something, if we cannot directly, because again, Africa Fashion Week and what we do, it not only brands individual designers, but it also, in two layers, brands Africa, and at, well, in three layers, Africa Fashion as well. So we have to be very careful as to there's this fine line of, okay, we want to help the designers, but also we don't want to direct consumers to um, not ready-made websites. So what we try to do on our platform, again, with Africa Fashion Week on our website, we create many, many profiles for the designers if, for example, their websites aren't ready. And we try to establish them with the strongest branding of photos, imagery, and things of that nature. So there's so many complexities and layers here to think of. Again, when you're looking at working, doing things in Africa related to African fashion, you have to consider these things and whether or not you're ready to take these things on. Presentation. We always talk about this um, to the designers. Um, again, I think it's very essential that my when we work with designers, we show them, you know, the difference between an amazing lookbook and a great lookbook and a not so great lookbook. And imagery, again, is something that we reinforce because you are competing, even if you don't think so, you're competing with millions of designers, even the established ones. So people do tend to uh, compare and that reinforces the branding of Africa. Every designer Unfortunately, unfortunately, when you brand yourself, you're also contributing to this perception, this wide range perception of what Africa is. And many of us take that on. And even if we don't want to admit it or if we don't want that responsibility, once you start um, dibbling, and dabbling, dibbling and dabbling in Africa fashion and putting your name out there in association with it, your work becomes synonymous with African fashion or Africa. Thank you. <laughs> so I just wanted to end um, some of the immediate things and tangible things that we do, just to give you guys an idea. With Adi Ray PR, during Africa Fashion Week, we do a lot of promotions. We uh, liaise between several editors and the designers and helping to get press interviews and things of that nature. We also monitor a lot of the press mentions and interests of fans and buyers and things of that nature in which at the end of the production, we send um, a private link to all the designers where they can download Excel sheets of buyers and participants that were interested in their garments. 
um, all the press mentions via online. And these are resources that we as business leaders in this room have access to. So don't take uh, Google alerts for you know, granted because these are the things that help us as PR professionals to help those designers that are you know, coming up in Africa. So we do that for them and we send them this Excel sheet so that they can then take it further and you know, reach out to those who are necessary. They have the PDFs of all the press mentions so they can use that when they're ready to establish and launch their websites. So it's so many things at once, so many balls being juggled, but I'm glad to say that we're here and we're able to do that and continue to do so. So I hope I've laid this foundation in your brilliant minds and I look forward to seeing you entrepreneurs work for Africa or in Africa. Thanks. Thank you, Adia. Um, what I really enjoyed about some of the information that she presented is that she brought a real business aspect to um, this business because it is very important. I work in trade and development and that's one of the things, the first thing I do when someone contacts me and they say I'm interested, interest, interested in going international, I go to their website. And if I see a website that is not professional, there's lots of typo errors, it's not, um, it's not usable, meaning that you can't get to the information fairly quickly, you can't get to their price points very, fairly quickly, then you know, that sort of goes on the back burner. So that's really something that's really important. And then the other thing that you mentioned that I think people seem to underestimate is partnerships. Partnerships and sponsorships, because those are really key, key aspects of being successful in business. And that's essentially what we're talking about, is putting it in a business sort of context. And then the other thing that I really liked about it is that she talked about how to leverage the networks. So she talked about PR and promotion and how she's able to framework this for some of the new and up and coming designers, linking them through partnerships, also linking them to major players in the fashion field. But also the other thing is leveraging those contacts. And I think that is one of the characteristics that are very successful in the business field. And it doesn't matter if you're in fashion or if you're in fashion and development, impact, uh, social impact development. These are things, it is a business at the end of the day. And so it needs to be framed in that professional context. And with that, one of the things you mentioned and one of the words, the buzzwords I kept hearing is rebranding Africa. So that leads us right now into our third speaker. And I'm getting kind of excited. I don't know about you guys. This audience is kind of quiet. I mean, you know, this audience reminds me of the diplomatic audience where we all sit there and we have these stern faces. I thought, well, I'm coming to the Fashion Institute, so I thought you guys would be moving around a little bit. So I think that the information that has been presented is really exciting. So our next speaker will, that, um, will present to us from Ghana, and it will be Roberta Anna. And this is interesting for you, for the students here, because it demonstrates the important role of technology, what it plays in doing business internationally. To be able to, because in many cases, and I know with many of our speakers, um, all of them are traveling back and forth between Europe, between Africa, from different continents. So this is another example of a good tool that you can use in your business. Roberta Anand is the chair of the Government Liaison Committee of Fashion for Development. She is also the project developer for Vogue Italia. Roberta, one of the, the projects that Roberta was responsible for was Lomo Vogue, rebranding of Africa issue. And I don't know where she finds the time to do all of these things. Another one of her job is, is that she's the CEO of Roberta Anna Consulting. Now, Roberta will share how Fashion for Development is implementing creative strategies for sustainable economic growth and independence for communities in Africa through fashion by highlighting some of the Fashion for Development awareness raising and distribution initiatives, such as the one project that I mentioned, Lomo Vogue, rebranding of Africa issue the Giving Back Bazaar, Fashion Designers Without Borders, and other collaborations with African designers. Roberta focuses on addressing such critical issues as education, women in empowerment, that's something that Lexi really focused on in, some, in his work, climate change, which is really important, 
poverty reduction, particularly as they relate to Africa in the context of United Nations Millennium Development Goals. As CEO of consulting firm, she specializes in specializes in aligning investors with governmental agencies to stimulate economic, social, and political growth. And this is again touching upon, upon using partnerships because there are vehicles in terms of using partnerships in the government as well as in the private sector. Previously, Roberta worked in the United Nations for several years promoting public-private partnerships. She is currently spearheading the Africa Lifestyle Investment Fund. And I get excited when I hear funds because I'm a finance person as well. I mean, I, you can have the best fashions, you can have the best promoter, you can have the best ideas, but if you don't have someone backing you in terms of you know, the finance, then you're not going to go very far. I think we can all agree about that. So she's actually spearheading an investment fund that is targeting development companies in fashion, jewelry, and personal care industries in Africa. And these are some of the top leading sectors in terms of opportunities for trade. So let's welcome Roberta Anand. Thank you.